All right, so I want to share with you five tips on how to enhance your data architecture with Hadoop. My name is Rodan Zadeh, I'm with Attunity, but nothing I say here represents the company. I might be actually offending O'Reilly, so don't record this session, they'll use it against us. Because we have only 10 minutes, I ask that if you have any questions or comment, leave it to the end. I will promise to ignore it. If you're here to listen to what I'm about to say, great. But if you're here to win prizes, you've actually come to the right place. We have a few things to give away, either at our booth or here, but I don't see any of my colleagues, so I think you're better off going to our booth. We're at booth 219, down the road. Before I start talking about Hadoop and why it's so hot, I thought we should talk about what makes Hadoop so interesting. And when I talk to our customers in terms of why are they deploying Hadoop, these are the typical themes that come up. First and foremost is EDW has become such a wonderful concept and there's such a wide use of it that we see that a lot of low value workloads are actually being deployed on EDW. And I'm specifically talking about ETL. With the advent of Hadoop, we have the opportunity to offload some of these workloads to the Hadoop environment and to continue to do our analytics on EDW. So Hadoop is a fantastic augmentation of EDW. Another driver for Hadoop are the analytics. We see a lot of customers doing analytics on Hadoop. The main reason is with Hadoop, you don't have schema on write. You actually have schema on read, which enables you to have this flexibility to use variety of data and to do your analytics. As a matter of fact, speaking of predictive analytics, I was here last year and I remember hearing about this fashion consultant. She was talking about how they're using Hadoop to figure out what's going to be in fashion next season. And that actually gave them the ability to overcome their competition because they knew what was going to be the next big thing in their domain and were able to manufacture it and get it out to distribution ahead of their competition. So predictive analytics is here to stay, and many companies are actually benefiting from it. And the other reason Hadoop is so interesting and so hot is it affords you the ability to have this diversity of data types. You could have files, you could have unstructured data, structured data, streaming data, data from machines, geospatial data, all of that could coexist in, in harmony within Hadoop. With that said, let's share with you some of the tips. You know, I know there are some folks here from O'Reilly and Strata. Chris doesn't count. Uh, what I'm about to say is somewhat controversial. I think Hadoop is not the end all and be all. There are all these other tools that are here in our enterprise. So what we see is this heterogeneous environment where you have no SQL databases, you have relational databases. The architecture that you build should be able to handle all these different data types. And as uh, our friend, uh, Martin Fowler coined the term uh, polyglot persistence. I keep thinking of polygamy, I'm sorry. Uh, the, the idea here is you could have all these different data platforms coexisting together and you should be able to map across all these different data types in your environment. Another aspect is essentially your data warehouse is a reflection of your business. If you have no idea, if you have no way of measuring what's going on in your data warehouse, you really have no way of knowing what's going on with your business. You have to have the tools that enable you to measure your enterprise data warehouse, assess what is loading up your data warehouse, what's reducing the performance of your data warehouse, and be able to help your, the lines of business to understand how their businesses are being impacted with the infrastructure that you have. The third tip is you need to deal with fresh data. The fact is that if you are looking in the rear view mirror, you cannot know where you're going in the future. And I think your insurance company really doesn't appreciate that. So it's important to think about the data, to, uh, to analyze the real time data as it's coming in. A lot of us in the data, uh, data warehouse and database business have been coining the term change data capture. If your tools cannot change the data as it's changing, then they're no good for your needs. Another thing to think through when you're trying to pick tools for your enterprise uh, 
data architecture is you need to have the tools that allow you to use your data, not some curated data, not a sandbox that has a predefined set of data sets that enables you to analyze. You really want to test your ideas with your data. You want to be able to move from your test and dev environment in an easy fashion to the production. You shouldn't have to worry about enterprise license agreements. You don't have to deal with UN Security Council in order to be able to set up your data warehouse and to set up your environment. You should easily be able to download a tool that enables you to integrate data real time so you could do your tests and development. And when you're ready, you want to be able to pull it to production. So the whole idea is we get to a point where we're spending all this time integrating data that we really have no time to actually easily manage it. And we got to keep in mind that the whole concept here is getting the right data into your platform so you could do analytics on it as you wish. And the last thing is, when you're thinking about defining your data architecture, cloud is your friend. You got to embrace the cloud. And what is interesting is, you know, there, there have been all these companies, and there's one right there, that has spent a lot of time defining the infrastructure so you could enable your applications to run in the cloud. So you don't have to build the infrastructure and test your ideas in the cloud. It really lowers the barrier to success. You could easily move your data, whether it's a data warehouse in the cloud, whether it is relational databases, whether it's NoSQL. You have the ability today, with a click of a mouse, move your data to the cloud and be able to start analyzing it in no time. I remember last night I was at the uh, innovators showcase and there was this company that was talking about how they could deploy their tools into the cloud and I saw it with my own eyes with just a click this guy was unable to create a Linux container and move data off to it so whatever tool you're choosing has to be able to embrace cloud because it's here to stay and it is here for you to make you successful so spend less time managing your data and spend time to using your data so just to summarize, there is this diversity of data. I talked about polyglot uh, persistence, the concept of not one tool fits all your needs. You have to have different data sets. You need to have a tool that could address this heterogeneity of your infrastructure and be able to integrate data from a variety of sources so you could do analysis on your own terms. You have to keep in mind diversity is very important for the health of your data architecture. The other thing is you have to have visibility into what's going on in your data platform. Whether it's Hadoop, whether it's Netiza, whether it's Teradata, you need to understand how are you deploying the, your resources to address your business needs. You have to keep your data fresh. Whether it is CDC, whether it is real-time data, you want to be able to get the latest data so you're actually making decisions based on data that's available to you right now, not the data that's stale. You need to have it on your terms. You need to be able to download a tool to do the data integration and not have to deal with enterprise data warehouse, not have to deal with your IT department, easily be able to capture that data in your environment. And last thing is, cloud is here to help you. Take advantage of it. Move your data to the cloud. There are data warehouses in the cloud. There are, real, uh, th th there are relational databases in the cloud. They're designed to support you. They're, they're designed to make you successful. Take advantage of it. And in order to do that, you need tools that enable you to move your data to the cloud. And guess what? I work for a company that actually has all the tools that do all these five. I guess that's why I'm here. I hope you enjoyed the talk. We have a bunch of really cool giveaways. I recommend you visit our booth. It's aisle 200, I think 219. 246, pretty close. Go in, we have this virtual reality Google goggle that you're gonna just blow your socks off. So go take, it, take advantage of it. There's a ton of giveaways, and I thank you for your time. If you have any questions or comments, I'd like to hear it. Thank you.